Hey everyone, this is Melvin from CODUtility.com and I'm here to give you guys another tutorial. And this is tutorial number 14 in the Black Ops 3 mapping and modding tutorial series. And today we're going to be porting a map using the standard template. Now, some people have other methods. There, I'm sure there's lots of ways to do it. But this is the way that I found was easiest because realistically it's a lot easier just to take all the, the necessary stuff out and then put it back in. And keeping the shape exactly the same is really the idea of porting a map. It's not so much having spawns go with it. It's not so much having the clipping go with it. It's a matter of having the geography or, or the uh, topography or whatever you want to call it. The actual layout of the map. That's what's the most important thing. So that's what we're going to focus on today. So first off, what we're going to do is we're let's see if oh, before I switch over. Yeah, okay, let's get this going here. I'm going to switch to the scene here. And first off, it's nor obviously not the normal scene here. This is a picture of NBA base. This is the map we're going to be porting. This is for COD4. It's not the greatest map ever made, but it is a great layout. It was the most popular map in the game Via Kong, a game I really liked when I was uh, a lot younger. And uh, yeah, it's got to be 15 years ago now. But uh, the point being is that, uh, yeah, this is a mod we made back in uh, summertime 2010-ish, somewhere in there. This map, this map was released. So it's quite a quite a bit of an old map and it was fun to play so why not pick this one if we're going to pick something okay so what does this look like when it's all said and done in cod5 when we're in cod5 tools hold on um what we're going to do is here is we're going to look um here we've got the uh this is what we're going to look at here i've stripped the map down to its bare essentials which is just the caulking brushes and patches and uh, i've left this clip in here because this clip here should be able to be ported without a problem too um, and if it doesn't come, it doesn't come, but this will give an example of uh, what works and what doesn't work. Now, the reason why this one here is because there is a clip underscore player in the uh, in the, in the uh, Black Ops 3 tools. Though I think the clip textures might be different resolutions, like this one might be 256, and the Black Ops 3 one, I'm not sure what that one is here. Let me see here. Uh, player underscore clip. Uh, yeah, it's 1024 by 1024. So that size difference actually might mean make a difference. Well, I'm not sure. So uh, we're going to see what happens with that. But So what we're going to do to go back here is we're going to take our map, whatever it is, and we're going to select it with the eye, like so. And then we're just going to apply a caulking texture to it. Oh, just a caulking texture to it. Okay, so then... Uh, I wonder if I can do that. Oh, let's give it a second here. We're frozen up. we got so many things open right now, so it's just going to take a second, I think. Oi! Come on. Okay. And we got funny jokes? No? <laughs> I don't know what to say when it goes like this. It's terrible. I think I have to start again. Okay, maybe not. Okay, so here, here what we can do is select everything with I. And as you can see here, this is uh, all of the BSP work. Uh, we've got the structural brushes, like the player, uh, player clip. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our on the 2d grid here uh where is it here oh no it's not it's not uh we're, sorry yeah it's been a while for cd factor let's go up to file go to save as and you're just going to save this anywhere you want as your prefab for this one here i've got to save this mp underscore nva basic underscore prefab so you can save it like that hit the save button i've already done so once you've done that uh no i'm not going to save any changes i'm going to close this down take a second and we'll end up going back into uh, the Black Ops 3 tools. Now in the Black Ops 3 tools, we're going to go up to the top here. And uh, actually, let's close this down first. We're going to start this again. Uh, no. And no. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we've, here we've got a folder. And this is in the Black Ops 3 map source underscore prefabs. Create a folder and for minus NVA base. And put your, your, your prefab in there. This is from an earlier attempt. I was testing something. Same file as you can see. It's the same thing, but for this tutorial, we're going to use underscore prefab one, so it differentiates from our map. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to mod tools, and we're going to go up to file, we're going to go new, and then we're going to create a new uh, a new map. Again, this will be mp underscore mva base for me, or mp underscore your map, whatever you've called it. And once you've done that, we're going to hit OK. It's going to create all the files, and we're going to have the mp underscore mva base uh, set up. So we're going to click on this blue and the check mark, and we're going to open it in Radiant. And so it takes a second to load up. Um, there should be notes that uh, said, I probably already said it before, but it, it is easier to replace all the stuff that comes in a map than it is to, to redesign the map, as in to get the layout exactly as is. So the most important thing really is the geo. Everything else can be dropped in pretty quickly. So in that sense, now we've got a, oh, I've already, yeah, okay, I was already tested this. So here, <laughs> let's delete this. Okay, so that's deleted. Okay, so what we're going to do here 
is uh, we're going to pretend that this map hasn't been touched before. It's brand new, uh, unaltered. And uh, we're going to act like uh, nothing's ever happened. So when we make our prefab, we're going to move it from wherever we saved it in COD5. And we're going to move it, back, again, like I said, to this folder. Once it's in this folder, it's just a prefab like anything else. So we're just going to go and select our spawners. All this stuff here. And in here, we're going to zoom out in our 2D window. And we're going to drag this stuff over about here, just so it's got lots of room. And you can see we left uh, the reflection probe in, and we left this bad boy in. This, this bad boy I don't think does anything. Yeah, it's just a piece of BSP. Um, so yeah, now we're going to right click on our map and if you've set up your grid like I have through the uh, Entity Browser, um, you've got your miscellaneous prefab right here. So you're going to right click on that. It's going to bring up a window obviously and we're going to go down to our NVA base folder that we created earlier and we're going to double click on the prefab. This is going to drop the prefab in and we should be able to see our reflection probe here somewhere. There we go, there's our reflection probe. So we actually start setting up this reflection probe in uh, in accordance or accordance in accordance. I don't even set it up with the map. <laughs> I can't even talk. Okay, so once that's done, uh, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna select these all these good uh, fellas over here, and we're gonna on the 2D grid just drag them back into somewhere in this area here. Is anyone else out here? I don't think so. Yeah, that's it. Some dirt on my monitor. I thought it might have been out of spawn. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so now this is all in here. We're going to have to readjust our volumes, obviously. And, uh, actually, let's bring this in just a little bit closer. And we're going to bring this up a little bit because there's some other ones hiding underneath. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to bring it over about so. Okay, so now that this is in the map, you can see it kind of doesn't correlate, right? It's a little bit low. So we can just grab this here leaving the other stuff alone and we can where's the arrow we can just drag this up a little bit if you look here we can zoom right in and we can see make sure the lowest part is below that brush that's there or above that brush this way everything height wise is in relatively the same area as it would be this is going to help us later for lighting and stuff so we don't want to go too high so we're just going to go about there and now we're going to set our volumes what i mean by setting our volumes is we can go from the outside here and again let's uh let's take this window out stretch out here you know here and again once we set this up, we can get our volumes in position so they cover our entire map. Up a little bit like that. That's probably good. And you can make it bigger if you want, but again, it's going to... Everything, all the volumes have to be measured inside of them. So think about it this way. If you've got a, you know, a coffee mug to analyze for the computer, or you've got a bathtub to analyze for the computer, or for the computer to analyze. Um, you know, obviously, the smaller the volumes, the better, easier it's going to be compiled, easier to work with, low-end machines, and all that stuff. So you're going to do this for all your volumes. You're going to fit them up appropriately, and then you should be uh, pretty much set up. There's one more thing you're going to have to do. That's stamping the prefab. So you're going to uh, shift-left-click on the prefab. You're going to right-click on it. And I'm showing this part because you, some of you, if you do this, will get this far. I might actually end up with a slight error. Um, you're going to stamp the prefab. So once the uh, prefab is stamped, we've got everything. We're going to hit escape a couple times. And we'll uh, control shift, left click this here. Um, surface, sorry. I'm going to bring this in here so you guys can see. And we're going to go into textures here. And we're just going to go to, uh, let's go to block. And we'll switch it to all. Let's give us some nice block textures here. Let's use this one here, the sandstone. That's pretty good. And you see there that it kind of goes to crap. Well, that's uh, lighting, right? So if you take our lighting, give it a quick compile. You can see it's popped into norm, uh, back into normal. Okay, so you can go around texturing your whole map. And boom, you can see the map starts to take shape pretty quick. Um, again, this is just uh, a quick tutorial on how to get your stuff in here. Now, there might be ways you want to do it in other ways. But this is the easiest way, and as you can see, the player clip didn't seem to come with the map. It didn't seem to stay, so I don't see it. You know, there's no brush there, so it just didn't come. It didn't transfer over, and that's probably to do with the texture size. Uh, the fact that one's 256 by 256 in COD5, and now it's 1024 by 1024. So those little things won't uh, necessarily be an issue. Uh, because you just reapply your, your clip, but when it comes down to the caulking texture, if you set it up the way I've got it here, you can see that it's it shouldn't be a problem. So if you go to all in use and shut this off here, we can see our caulking texture is 256 by 256. And if we look in uh, the other tools, which I think I've closed, I'm fairly confident you're going to find that they're 256 by 256. 
Okay, so I'm going to leave it that like that. If there is a problem, if I made a mistake with the caulking texture and it's still working, I'd be surprised. But at the same time, please let me know in the bottom. If you guys like the video, hit the like button. You want to see more tutorials. You want to see more preview videos. Our map is almost done and ready, ready to release. You want to know all this stuff. Make sure you subscribe. And definitely, more importantly, go to cdutility.com and you know, show us your maps, man. I want to see uh, see what you guys are working on. We've got a preview, uh, suggestions, you know, anything you guys got, we want to see it. So, till next time, thanks so much for checking out, and uh, I guess peace. Later.